Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. I am Evangelist Deborah Gary. I am here today with the ministry called Real Issues. I welcome you. Um, I feel like I do have something for you. I wanted to go another route. I wanted to do another lady. But when I heard this name mentioned, I was like, you know what? I think that's probably the way I should go. I mean, I just kind of like felt a little something. So um, we're going to talk about this particular lady. And I think that uh, quite a few of the ladies that may be watching might be able to relate with this. And this is not to rule out men because I'm quite sure that some men would be able to relate with this also. I just wanted to come in a sitting position right now. I wanted to be just a little more relaxed. And I do have something for you. I will be coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 1. But let me pray first before we get started. Heavenly Father, I yield myself to you. I thank you. I honor you. I love you. I reverence you. I give you all glory, honor, and praise that is so well deserved. And thank you for being our Father. And thank you for being the all faithful one, all sufficient one. Daddy, I pray for the listening audience of the Ministry of Real Issues. I ask that you remember them, bless them. Daddy, you promised that you would not forsake them. And I ask that you will do it expeditiously and, ex and, and expediently to remember them. For you have written us all on the palms of your hands. And I'm so grateful for that. And I love you for it. And let me thank you now for what you are about to do for all of us. I claim this by faith and I thank you for it. Now, I am not going to be before you long. Um, normally, I am. I mean, I, I've got a 30-minute program, and I tend to always be going over. I'm thinking this one might be a little shorter. We're going to see because I just want to get in there and speak what I feel like needs to be said and then get off. So this is out of 1 Samuel chapter 1. Um, let me go ahead and read from verse 1 to verse 7 so you will know where I'm coming from. Now, there was a certain man of Ramathazophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, and the son of Zuth, and, Eph and Ephratite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And that's actually who I'm going to be speaking about today, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice him to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were the priests of the Lord. They were there. Verse 4. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons, her daughters, portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord had shut up her womb. Verse 6 in Samuel chapter 1. And her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. I know we've spoken about Hannah before. I know many people know who Hannah is. I know she has talked about quite frequently, and um, I don't know that we need to hear um, about another Hannah so soon. I just know, you know, that many people hear about this. But I wanted to find out about Penina, the position of Penina, why it was imperative that they had to put this particular scenario about Hannah into the Bible that we are reading 4,000 years later. What is it about Penina? And so if I had to title this, I wrote down, What good is Penina? What good is Penina? Now, I looked up her name, and her name means pearl. Her name means pearl. I'll give you a little biography about Penina. Penina, the Bible doesn't tell us much at all about Penina. I mean, not much at all. What the Bible do tell her, and I'll tell you why I bring the relevance of this, 
But what the Bible do tell us is that Penina, she was a wife. Penina, she had children. And Penina, she was provoking Hannah. That's pretty much the basic extent of what we know about Penina. Yet Penina had a pivotal role in the life of Hannah. Penina was given portions for her family, for her sons and for her daughters. Although Hannah was given a hefty portion because of the way that Elkanah loved Hannah. But Penina was only given portions. Now, I was looking into something. It's called the Midrash. The Midrash. I didn't know what that was. But to drive home the point, I was looking into this um, uh, 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 thing about the Midrash. And what it is, the Midrash, M-I-D-R-A-S-H, is that it is a expository, like a composition of all the things that are missing that has been compiled together in the Jewish exposition, okay? And so the, 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 um, the Torah, the prophets, the writings, you know, they use all of this to bring together and to bring home what we may not know about those particular incidents. And so according to the Midrash as to what it was telling us about Penina, it told us quite a few things. But one of the things that it told us was that Hannah was the first wife. Hannah was the one that Elkanah really loved. But they said that it's been over 10 years. And because it's been over 10 years, Hannah was barren. The Bible tells us that the Lord shut her womb. Hannah was barren and had not given Elkanah any children. So Elkanah got a second wife, and her name was Penina. What good is Penina? And when he brought this second wife into the home, the first wife, who was used to all the benefits, who was used to all the privilege, who was used to all the time, who was who, 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 who was used to being number one all the time, who was used to, you know, just having a house to herself and all, you know, has now been compromised. What good is Penina? Now, Penina was so jealous and envious because of Hannah, because Elkanah, he came home and gave the largest portions to Hannah, even though she was barren, but because of his love for her, because she was the first wife, because that was all he really wanted, he brought everything to her and the Penina, who now got reeled in to watch what is really happening, to watch where she feels that now she is second best, to watch where she feels like, is she irre irrelevant? Am I just here just to be a, 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 a wound carrier? You know, she is now become jealous and envious of what she has gotten reeled into because of the love Elkanah had for Hannah. So Penina, what good is Penina? So Penina, she is now invoking wrath, invoking anger, invoking jealousy, invoking envy, she is now invoking insults. She is now invoking these things into Hannah, the favored one. What good is Penina? So this was going on. The Bible says this was happening year after year. And it got to the point. I'm not here to talk about Hannah. I'm here to talk about Penina. She's going to be enough. But it got to the point that Hannah was so despair, so so 
out of is so, you know, just depressed and oppressed and repressed that when she went to the temple, Eli thought she was drunk, but she was praying to the Father. What good is Penina? Penina provokes Hannah to the point that uh, Hannah got in the disposition that she might have taken for granted. She was so compromised with the life she had that now she was taken to another position. Now she was at a point that she had to go to the temple. She had to go to Shiloh. She had to cry her heart out. They thought the priest thought she was drunk. She yielded everything to daddy. She wasn't leaving until she knew that she had a release. Why? Because of what was put in her by one person. What good is Penina? Hannah had it going on. Hannah was all that and then some. But there was a Penina that made her questionable. There was a Penina that brought in a little bit of doubt. Penina. What good is Penina? And now that Penina put into Hannah and Hannah took a different disposition. Hannah put on a fight. Hannah put on something where she was like, you know what? I'm not going to just sit down. I'm tired of fasting. I'm tired of not eating. I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of we weeping. I'm tired of being barren. You know, she took on another disposition that she went to Shiloh and she cried out to God that the priest literally thought she was drunk. And she bore her heart and she bore her soul out to daddy. Why? Because of Penina. This would never have happened if it wasn't for a Penina. Remember that. Remember that. And we're going to talk a little more about that. But for those of you that feel like you're being mocked, you're being followed, you're being envied, you're being jealous, you're being talked about, you're being questionable, you're not understanding. That is a penina. What good is penina? Penina was there for a reason. Look what it pushed Hannah into. This was done, this was done, like I said, the Bible tells us, this was done year after year after year. Now, the Midrash that I was talking to you about, the Jewish expose that brings forth this compilation of the Torah and the writings and the prophets and the things that was missing, it lets us know that Penina actually had 10 Sons. She had 10 children. 10. 10 children. Penina. And so you would think, you would think that when, El when Elkanah would come in, that the heaviest portion, the hefty portion, you would think would be given to Penina. She's got the most children. At the time, Hannah was barren. It makes sense that Elkanah would give the hefty portion to Penina. But he came and he gave the hefty portion to his first love, which was Hannah. And you know what? It got to the point it ended up that with Penina, the way she mocked Hannah, the way she scourged Hannah, the way she tried to put doubt and questionable into Hannah, the way she put a depression and a grievance into Hannah and anger into Hannah, what good is Penina? But it did something for Hannah but it also caused, caused something to Penina.
So ladies, if you hold on, if you don't give up, if you don't give in, it's going to cost Penina, but it's going to bless you. The Bible tells us that as, as Hannah did these things, the Lord opened up her womb and she met with Elkanah and she conceived a Samuel. She made a promise to daddy that she was going to give Samuel back over to him and that a razor wasn't going to touch his head. And she kept that promise. The only thing she asked of Hannah, of, of, of Elkanah, was that he waited until the baby was weaned. And once he once she weaned the baby, he can go over to the temple and stay there. And daddy can have him. And you know, there's something in that that I want to do a real quick 30-second prayer over. This was Samuel literally. But a lot of us, we have a Samuel. It may be your destiny. It may be your vision. It may be your ministry. It may be that you just may, may have just found out that you are pregnant. But whatever the case is, whatever is happening, you know, when you give it over to daddy, he is going to do something remarkable, something marvelous, something extravagant. And the Bible says that when she gave Samuel over to daddy, which she did, which I pray that we are doing that now with our visions, with our ministry, with our destinies, with our heart's desires. The Bible said that, that Hannah told daddy that she wouldn't even let a razor come near his head. So I'm also praying and declaring for us over these things that it will not be cut off that it will not be cut short that a razor will not get to our destiny our ministry our heart's desires our vision it will not be cut off but daddy will see it to fruition in the name of the lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Now let me go on. The Bible, the, 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 the Midrash, who I was looking into, has said that Penina had 10 children, 10 sons. And so uh, because of the way that she treated Hannah, it says the Midrash, according to their, their compilation, the things they have gathered from the Torah and the writings and the prophets, it lets us know that for every one son, now if you look over in chapter 2, the Bible says that Hannah ended up with five children, excluding Samuel. She ended up with five more. Now to me, that's a multiplicity. She ended up with five more children. And, and the, the, the um, Midrash that put all this together lets us know that for every, listen y'all, listen, listen. That for every one child that Hannah had, Penina lost two sons. Let me say that again. For every one child. That Hannah end up having, Penina buried two sons. So the next time that Hannah got pregnant, Penina end up burying two more sons. So that was four. So the next time Hannah got pregnant, Penina ended up burying another two sons. So that was six. So it got to the point. That Penina buried eight sons. And Hannah, in the spirit of fruition, she had a total of six, five, and then Samuel. So you know what? Daddy had to humble Penina down. Penina was no longer invoking provoking grievous making causing grievance or causing depression or 
putting forth anger and mockery and wrath. She was no longer doing these things to Hannah. No longer doing these things. The wife of Elkanah. Now, you know what happened? As time went on, Penina, what good is Penina? Penina had to come. I don't know. I kind of just imagine, you know, in myself that she probably came crawling on bended knees and she had to go to one named Hannah and she had to plead to Hannah, the one that she envied, the one that she was jealous of, the one that she provoked, the one that she mocked, the one that she caused grievance and put another disposition in her, that she had to go to her and she had to plead to Anna to be an intercession on her behalf. That daddy will let her last two sons live. Be careful, Penina. What good are you? She had to go to Hannah and plead for intercession for her last two sons. And Daddy, according to what I was reading, what the Midrash had compiled together, you can look this up, look up the M-I-D-R-A-S-H, that Hannah did, and you know what? That's the heart that we have to have. That lets us know that Hannah was spending time with Daddy. That lets us know that Hannah was crying out to, to Daddy. Because look at the heart that Hannah has now. Hannah was pleading so much that when Penina came to her she accepted the challenge to pray on behalf of Penina and Hannah prayed to daddy that he would save those last two children I wish I knew what their names was but he would save those last two children and listen for the sake of Hannah for the intercession of Hannah. For the coming to daddy by Hannah. Daddy answered and granted her petition to let the last two live. But it was because of Hannah. So can I speak to the Peninas, what good are you? We know that you might be mocking people you hate, people you despise, people you are jealous of, people you are envious of, people you want out the way, people you may feel is a challenge, pe pe people you hoping that daddy will remove, whatever. But you know you are a Penina spirit. Please be careful because the very one that you coming against may be the very one that would have to plead your cause or your case. What good is Penina? Ladies, let me tell you, your Peninas, you may be one, you might be living in a mansion. You may have two luxury cars but then there is a penina hmm. she thinks she's something she ain't all that it don't take but one thing that can get stripped right away here comes penina don't think you all that i can have that and then son you've got a penina or maybe you are a CEO of a company and you've got some Peninas. What good are your Peninas? But you may have some Peninas and they may not be working as hard because they don't like the fact that you are the CEO of a multi-million 
business industry. So they may come late every day. They may take two hour lunches. They may not work as hard. They may talk about you as the CEO because they are your paninas. But then you know what? It may get to a point where your paninas need you. There may be an economic collision or a collapse or something like that. And you may have to downsize and you may have to decrease. And you're a panina, not that you wanted to, but she may have to be one that you may have to let go because of the downsizing. Now here comes your panina begging and pleading and giving you these excuses and why she needs her job. Be careful of the Peninas. Who am I talking to? You may be a Penina and you may be, you. I like this, you may actually be married with children. You might be happily married with children. And you got a lady, and she may be next door, she may be across the street, she may be down the street, and she is up, she might even be, get this, oh Lord, this just came up in me, she might even be in your family. And now she's a penina. She doesn't like the fact that he loves you. She doesn't like the fact that you've got two boys and two girls and they are well-educated children. She doesn't like the fact that he honors you. He caters to you. He's bringing you roses every day. He is at your beck and call. He is listening to you. He is wrapped around you. And your paninas do not like that. So be careful because you know what the what the Peninas would do? They will wait till you're off to work or you are left the building and there'll be this knock on the door. Who is it? And the door may be answered and it's Penina. Who am I talking to? Because I feel it. And it may be Penina. And I may answer another name. But it's Penina. And now Penina has come to Alkanai. And you may have another name. And now Penina, oh my God, I feel this. And now Penina is there to seduce you. She is there to try to get you attracted to her. She is there to try to make you lose interest in the life that you have. Penina, what good is Penina? And you know how it got exposed. You know how it got rid of. Because your husband, who has been faithful to you, who has honored you, who has looked after you and taken care of you, your husband says, baby, sit down. We need to talk. And you sit down at the table or the bed or whatever. And he says, baby, I need you to stay away from Penina. And you look at your Elkanah and you say, why? What's going on? She's never did anything wrong. And your Elkanah is describing the scenario that was just set up. And he exposed her. And now your Penina, she can't even look you in the face. She don't even call you no more. She don't even come over no more. She is well alerted that your husband exposed her. What good is Penina? But for you, because of the what's happened, your marriage, you have gotten stronger. You've gotten more faith. You've got more well endowed. You've got more trust. It did something for you, but it has taken away from her. What good is Penina? So you all, I'm going to get ready to close. I think I am inside of my 30 minutes. Glory to God. Be careful 
of your bananas. I wanted to come another route. I know a lot of, you know, like I said, we hear about Hannah. We love Hannah. We love the blessings, the favor of Hannah. We know that. But the thing is, remember this. Remember this. There would never have been a Hannah if there was not a Penina. Let me say that again. There would never had been a Hannah if there was not a Penina. What good is Penina? She's going to make you more valuable. She's going to make you worth more than you thought you were worth. She's going to bring the best out in you. She is going to let you know that you really are all that and then some. She is going to, 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 to affirm and confirm that you really are somebody. Because Penina is trying to take away. Amen. But Daddy is putting in you. He's giving it back to you. There is an alkana that will give you the hefty portion, Hannah. There is an alkana that might remember Penina because keep in mind now, Alkanah went after Penina because she was able to bear the children he couldn't have with Hannah. Back in those days, children was of utmost importance. So he went and he got the Penina for the children. But Penina, oh my goodness, was not having it. She was not happy. And she did everything she could, she could to have the life of Hannah. But Daddy said no. Be careful. You might have to pray for your Peninas and have the heart. I'm closing with this. Have the heart that Hannah had where you are able to pray for your Peninas. Amen. God bless you. I am Evangelist Deborah Gary. I'm here with the Ministry of Real Issues. My voicemail is 682 313 Oh my goodness, I did go two minutes over. I love you. Thank you for listening. Pray for me, y'all, to the Heavenly Father. Pray for me. God bless you. Bye. I love you. Bye.